Well, ladies and gentlemen, the end of season one of Poker Gauntlet is here. This is the show where we analyze 10 hands semi-randomly. From an aspiring poker player, this season has been the 25 NL season, and the final contestant's name is Andrew. Wish him luck in his Poker Gauntlet quest. Can he dislodge the top score from Chad from episode nine? Chad came from nowhere, played phenomenally, Got a score over six. The editor will have that on the screen. Can Andrew beat that score? This is the last chance of the season. Otherwise, Chad will take the gold. Editor, you know what to do. Let's have that sword fly across the screen. Before we get started, after you've watched this video, you might want 43 minute, I think it's 43 minutes, free video on Carrot Corner called The Beginner's Blueprint. It is the 10 first things you should fix in your game before you do any other tuition. Definitely subscribe to our newsletter at the bottom of our homepage. Click the link at the top of that description there and you will get free access to The Beginner's Blueprint and you will also get Pete's Weekly which is a strategy article that goes out by email every Thursday, usually in the afternoon UK time. It's free. It's constant advice from me on poker. It's me rambling and ranting, sometimes about other stuff about my life as well, but usually it's about poker. You don't want to miss that. You don't want to miss the beginner's blueprint. Absolutely free. Go ahead and sign up to our email list at Carrot Corner to get both of those lovely things. So let's get to episode 10 of Poker Gauntlet and see if Andrew can beat the Chad of 25 and L. moment is here i'm not gonna lie i'm kind of rooting for chad because he impressed me so much with that hand where he block bet the straight after check raising the flop on that flush completing turn still thinking about it i wake up at night thinking about it just smiling just like good job chad you deserve to play the game mate literally three in the morning just waking up and doing that wife's like shut up pete back to bed Chop about Chad. Get over him. He doesn't like you anyway. Anyway. We have the Queen Nine of Hearts. This is Andrew's first hand. We're going to open the cutoff, which seems good. So far, so good. 974. Well, this looks like a recreational player from my HUD that you guys can't see. 35, 21, over 50 hands. Not a big sample. I am not too bothered here, honestly. I think all the lines are quite close here. I think betting something. In the neck of the woods of like two thirds pot, three quarters pot's pretty good. I think I prefer that to a small bet simply because it's a recreational player, you have a really good hand, you have some backdoor nut potential, and there aren't too many two pair combos on this board for villains, so you just have a more nutty hand with a good one pair than normal. If it was nine, seven, six, you know, I wouldn't mind a small bet. Yeah, love this. I think this is good. Probably my favorite line with the backdoor flush draw, especially. I think this is good. Check is okay as well. Because the turn probe game is played really badly, you do have an overcard that makes your hand a bit less vulnerable. But, you know, it's probably a bit better to bet. I don't know. It's close. Villain leads the ace turn. We're getting three to one. We have redraw. They can still be merging some bad hand slash bluffing. This does make me feel a bit more pessimistic, though. I do think this pushes the villain a bit more towards hands that beat us. But I think we're still very comfortably in call territory here. So we make the call, which is great. And villain goes for a half pot on the river on a kind of draw completing card. I think that because villain is called a bigger flop C bet here, their range is way more filtered than it would be normally. Like it's possible when you bet one third that people are just flicking in a call with like Queen Jack or something. And then there's this non standard turn line, which is definitely like bad for us to face, right? Definitely decreases the equity of our hand compared to when we face check. So villains had to jump through quite a few hoops to be bluffing here. On this card, jack 10 and 5-6 get there. They probably bet bigger most of the time, but they are bluffs removed from the opponent's range now. They're impossible bluff combos, if you will. 
I'm inclined to think this is mostly like some ace high that called the flop, some two pair. Some of the merges are going to beat us, right? Because they're going to be like king nine. It's possible villain is like butchering 10 7, jack 7, 10 9, 4 5, or something like that. That's very possible. And so at 3 to 1, you know, is that 25% of the opponent's range? I kind of want to say no when they lead the ace turn. If it wasn't for that turn lead, like if Turner gone check check here and they'd done this, I would say that fish have enough random merges that you can just call, even though the texture is horrible. But when they've led the ace turn, which is not an appetizing thing for fish to do, fish generally go into their shell on flush turns, straight completing turns, ace turns, that kind of thing. I think this is probably a fold. I don't think we're going to get 25% here, just with the amount of hoops villain has had to jump through here to be bluffing. I really, really like this hand. I mean, it's not that difficult a hand, but it was just played exceptionally well. From the big bet on the flop, which I think is the highest DV line, from the turn call to the river fold, it'd be easy to mess this up. 7.5 out of 10. Let's go. Let's go, Andrew. Could this be a challenge? Could this be the dethroning of Chad? Will I be saying a different name when I wake up in the middle of the night? Let's find out. Let's keep going. 7.5 is really generous. I've become a big softy, guys, right? Definitely become a big softy. Okay. Sixes, because you have a recreational player in the big blind as well, I think I would call. If it was just regs here, I'd try to isolate because I want to be heads up against the fish, but I think I would just call. I think this is a little bit sloppy because with the short stack and the big blind, you're just going to perform a bit better by, by flatting here. I don't think people cold call enough. I think at some point there was a mind virus. There are many of them in the world, right? But there was a mind virus of... Three better fold when you're not in the big blind and this became like a massive part of everyone's game but really cold calling was fine and solvers were like well actually you never actually really have to cold call anything but that's wrong because against fish you do have to cold call and when they're fish in the blinds you do want to cold call like a classic example is like when a reg opens and you have a whale in the big blind and you have like eights or ace queen off or ace ten suited you should just call right because three betting that hand is never great I'm simplifying my strategy. <laughs> yeah, very good. But you're costing yourself EV, so so cold call this spot. I don't hate this when the opener is a is a fish, but you know, hijack against button, it's never gonna be an amazing three bit. Oh, we get the cold call anyway. Happy days. And we flop a set. Happier days. And this guy leads happiest days of all the days. Am I right, guys? Okay, so we are doing very well here. I'd imagine our fold equity right at. We have this coach, Aussie coach called Spencer, and he has a series called Fold Equity Fucking Right at. On Carrot Corner, that's how he speaks. He's like, Fold Equity Fucking Right at. Like, that's his voice. Pretty sure that's his voice. If you guys disagree, let me know in the comments, but there's a video where he's on the channel. Pretty sure that's how he sounds. And Fold Equity Right is all about assessing. Your fold equity, because lo and behold, in real life, your fold equity is nothing like what it is in GTO. So, do you slow play here? Well, what would that gain against? It would gain against totally nothing, or hands that were bet folding, but investing later if you just call, right? So, if you thought Villain was very likely to be bluffing here with King Queen of Diamonds and to spew off because he's an absolute maniac, like the rarest of maniacs, the most insane of the insane, like the kind of guy that should be like rocking back and forth in some mental asylum with padded walls if you think that's your opponent maybe you can call here but this is a raise and the reason this is a very clear raise is that even though urgency wise pot growth wise you don't need to be too quick off the mark here you do from the point of view of like action killing cards coming and fold equity radar here is just going to say that there's a very very low fold equity spot there's a, there's a video actually in the Fold Equity Radar series available for Carrot Corner subscribers for just $49.99 per month for you know, 70 videos or something by this point. Great value, check it out at Carrot Corner. But there's a video there where Spencer actually shows a clip of a hand that I played in my True EV series, which is also a, a subscriber video. And that's a series as well. And he shows that when Fold Equity is really, really low, the fold equity radar tells you to fast play value but not bluff. So, you know, in a spot like this, how bad would bluffing be? How bad would you feel about taking an airball hand and raising here? 
how awful would you feel? Terrible? Yeah, me too. Me too, guys. Therefore, you should just fast play your value hand in this spot, right? Hate this. Okay, anyway, mistake made. We move on. Um, I mean, again, your fold equity is really quite low here. I think I just jam. I'm not too worried. I am worried about, like, the fourth club coming and killing my action sometimes. I think it's so rare that Villain has nothing here. Like, it's so, so rare. Unless he's an absolute maniac. Oh, dear. This doesn't happen often, but when it does happen, oh, it's just it's just so painful, man. Like, your fold equity radar on a turn and on the flop were both telling you that there was no fold equity, yet you just didn't want to take the money. And now you're going to check back, and you're going to win against, like, let me guess here. Ace, jack of spades, let's say, you're going to win against. Wow. You were losing the whole time. Your line saved you money. Villain freaked out because he didn't have the nut flush anymore. What a hero Andrew is. He maximized the EV. No, he didn't. He maximized his dollar outcome, not his EV. It sounds really bad. Um, It's bad on all streets. I like the river check, but it's bad on all streets. I'm going to give his hand a 2.5 out of 10. Moving on to hand numero tre. Allora. The Queen Four of Hearts. That was Italian, by the way. You guys don't know that because you never leave your houses. You've never met anyone from other countries, but it was Italian. We go for the call with the Queen Four of Hearts. The flop is Ace King Queen. I would just fold. Can you fold? God, I mean, they've bet bigger than small, right? If small is like quarter pot, third pot, they've bet bigger. Do have the back door, though. This is super close, but listen, like with a pair with no draw. You're just already in really bad shape here against the bigger bet. People are also going to undersee bet here. Like, they're not going to bet the size with eights a lot of the time. Like, a bit smaller or check. I think you could just fold the flop, honestly. Probably a bit better. It's a very, very low realizability spot. This is like the burning building, you know, getting out of the burning building at the first possible opportunity. Not a bad thing. Okay, so Villain doesn't really have a king now. They have an ace mostly. They might have a queen. If they have an under pair... They might bluff the river, but probably they'll just take the chop here. To be honest with you, I don't think people are going to bluff enough chops here. So I would just try and get value from an ace. And maybe villain will raise you if you go small enough. I mean, that said, if we go too small, we just lose value against ace I think this is ace a ton based on the flop size. Yeah, I just bet something normal here. I'd probably bet a bit bigger than this. I think I want to be greedier. My feeling is that we get raised so infrequently by a bluff here anyway. That, okay, I would I would call here in case we've induced. And, you know, king is quite rare. After turn check, it can still happen. But yeah, I'd probably just bet bigger. Then if we get raised, we can probably just fold, honestly. Um, But when we bet smaller, I think we do have to call it off. And I think I just want to be a bit greedier than that against an ace there. I think an ace is going to call a bigger size and quite frequently. I think it's inelastic enough that you want to size up there. And I think the line of checking or inducing from, like, pocket pairs or something is just bad and I don't think pocket pairs have really bet the flop that sizing too often they could do but it's just a bit less likely when it's bigger than third pot okay I'm gonna give this hand don't really like the river sizing I think you maybe could fold the flop here without much bad stuff happening against the size give this hand a four out of ten it could be better not a disaster but it could be better Hand number, num, number, hand number four. I'm feeling number than I was at the start of this video by the disappointment of the last two hands from Andrew. I'm losing faith. I'm going back to, to Chad. You know, Chad's the main guy again. Love you, Chad. I wonder if he's watching. I need to sign up to Chad's OnlyFans, actually. Let me just... Um. Okay, 8-9 offsuit. Do we want to peel this? This hand plays very, very badly three-way. Like, very badly. Like, solvers don't like this call. Solvers are like, nah, nah, bro. Can't do it. But then again, solvers don't know that you're playing against an absurdly weak player. This guy's 37-27. Beep it, PFR. So, being in it to win it here, I have some sympathy for this. 8-9 sucks, though. Because on Queen-Jack-10, who can tell me why 8-9 sucks? Because on Queen-Jack-10, it's ace-king. We know that everybody always has ace king every time they play a hand. Don't we live players? Don't we live one, two players? Yes, we do. 
that's right. Check, 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 check. This hand is not going to make it into Poker Gauntlet. But we had a little lesson on the fact that 9-8 sucks, so we'll leave it in the video. Squeeze, good squeeze bigger. This guy's bad, probably won't matter. I don't mind this though. We get 4-bet. Man, this sucks. Definitely don't shove here. If you shove here, you don't deserve to play the game. It's horrible. I mean, it's a big, it's a big old 4-bet. How often is Ace-King 4-betting you here? From under the gun, like sometimes. Is Jax ever 4-betting you? Nah. You can just fold. Just fold. You don't even need to peel this, because you know what? Ace-King is going to be in there, like, a fraction of the time. Like, it will be in there, I don't know, 40% of the time or something. And the rest of the range is Kings and Aces, 12 combos unblocked. There's a few combos of Ace-King, which is doing well against you anyway. Like, what are you going to do? Call, and then because an Ace or a King didn't come, you're just going to call down? Is that what you're going to do, Andrew? Because that's really bad. But we can't fold Queens, right? It's too painful to fold Queens. Just fold the flop. You've lost. You have lost the pot. You cannot draw to backdoor queens, backdoor flush, or a set at 16% required. It's not enough because you're not going to see a free turn. Just fold the flop. Now you've hit a straight draw. God. Villain has... Hmm. Ace-king, I'm going to guess. Still going to guess he has ace-king. Still going to guess he has ace-king. I would fold the river. Love it. But what a terrible way to play pre-flop and on flop. When you know that your opponent's range is insanely strong. It's 25 no limit. This is not, you know, this is not 600 NL on ACR. This is not high stakes on GG poker. This is, this is some 25 NL game. Your opponent probably just has ace-king. Aces. Kings. Or queens. He probably has kings, actually. Yeah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna see. The turn check's a little bit weird here. I wonder if it's just like freaked out. Or it's either freaked out by the 10 or it's kings. But yeah, this is super under bluffed. And you know it because you fold the river, right? Like if it was actually reasonable to call pre here, we'd probably want to at least think about calling the river because we're beating ace jack suited. We're beating ace five, ace four. The problem is we're just not going to see these hands for betting 3x here pre-flop after this action sequence. So pre-flop call, you can honestly just not make it. And then the flop call, you can just not make it. So this hand gets a three out of 10. I'm going to be kind of harsh here. I just don't like this hand. I think we could have just done a lot better. It's hard, I know. But then someone said I was getting soft in the comments, so I've got to be really, really tough now and be horrible to people. Andrew, that's bad. Shit. Do better. Is that harsh enough, you guys? Let me know. Top comment this time. Better be. Pete's back to being harsh again. We love it. We love to see it. Order is restored. It better be something like that, that top comment in the, in the comments. It better get upvoted as well when you guys leave it. I swear to God. All right, opening ace jack off, getting called by small blind. Betting flop, okay. I think it's a very high AV turn bet and you can size this kind of cleverly. Like you really don't have to overbet here because what the 10 is gonna do is it's gonna force like sub king X to just fold a lot anyway. There isn't a lot of 10 X. The 10 X that there is is 10 X of diamonds, which is never folding. And so what you can do here is a little exploit at 25 and L is you can overbet when you have it. Because they're king in flush draw and 10x with a diamond is going to call. King X of diamonds is always calling. You can overbet really big here when you have it. And when you don't have it, you can bet like 7, 6. And you can get folds from 4x, 5x, 6s, 7s, 8s, 9s, etc. So I like I like this. This is really good. In reality, you're not actually indifferent with your bluff sizing on a card like this. Because this is one of the most inelastic cards out there. Because it puts out that second over card to pocket pairs and completely whiffs stuff like ace nine of spades right so it's just one of these cards that's like i don't want to say it's either going to get folded or it's not but we're moving into that kind of territory against humans on a card like this villain calls we hit the ace in the river is this too thin to value bet no i don't think so you block queen jack and queen jack is really unlikely you lose to ace four ace five that got stubborn on turn ace ten of diamonds they don't really make a lot of good hands on this ace, actually, because they just don't have queen jack a lot here. They either fold flop or raise turn, mostly, I think. Maybe they have it sometimes. They only have ace 10 in diamonds or spade variety. Ace or ace 5 might even fold turn, because people get a bit cagey when there's two overcards to their pair at these stakes. Yeah, I think I'm value betting river here. I'm not being shy. I want to get called by a king. I wouldn't go huge. I'd go like b60 or something. Yeah, we go like just under a half pot. 
That might be a slight um, downplay, slight undersize here. Could probably go a bit bigger. God. I mean, like, it, it really, really sucks when you get raised on the river in games like this. It sucks so much that actually you're probably just toast. Even though you size kind of small and you're top of range and, okay, you're top of range with sizing probably, right? And you might have induced and villain doesn't rep that many value combos. They probably just have pocket tens or queen jack or ace 10, probably. Maybe ace five, ace four. They probably just have one of those hands. And you should just fold because here's the thought experiment. If you line up a thousand people that play these stakes, eight, nine hundred of them are just never, ever bluffing you here. Ever. And the ones who are are over bluffing, but they're not abundant enough. So you can solve a spot like this just through brute force demographics. Love the fold. I think it's right. It's tempting to call there at 21% required, but like, you know. Even the 20% that can bluff there, they're not bluffing every time, right? So you're just not going to win 20% of the time. You're going to win about 10% of the time or something. So I love the fold. And I think that we played this pretty well. We got the turn sizing absolutely right. We could have bet the river a bit bigger. But I still think it's okay what we did. And I love the fact that we folded. I'm going to give this hand a 7 out of 10. I think this is a really solid hand. I've done that thing where I'm not recording the scores, so... This absolutely sucks. So I'm going to have to pause the video and take a quick note of the scores so that I know what's going on. Okay, so we're averaging around, I don't know, 4 or something. We've got 7.5, 2.5, 3, and 7, I believe. Unless I've messed up one of those, the editor will tell you if I have. But this is looking like it's not going to be enough. But who knows? Maybe Andrew can pull a rabbit out of the hat here. Maybe he can do something incredible. Is this the right hand? It's the new sixes hand? Yes, the new sixes hand. Okay. So we've gone ahead and opened. We've been called by the big blind. We've got a flop of king, hen seven. We've checked the flop. I think that's reasonable. I don't I don't mind. If you want to play range bet there, you can. I don't think it's the best strategy against the human. I think check is pretty nice here. People are going to lead turn fairly high EV on a board like this. They're not going to lead like too randomly. Yeah, just checking the showdown until this. And now I would, I mean, like... I'd probably just overbet. Like, they just don't have a 9 here. They're just not checking a 9 at these stakes, really. It's going to be sub, like, sub 5% of people are going to find a check with a 9 here at 25 and L. But then again, if you overbet, it's probably a really high EV bluff line. But I think this is just blood from a stone. When they check three times here, it's going to be very, very overfolded in general here. I'd just go really big and hope they don't believe you. I would just max out. I'd go, like, B150 or something. Like, if we do run into a 9, that kind of sucks. Nah, maybe I wouldn't. Like, it's still possible they have a 9, and, like, it's going to just yield a lot of fold equity. Maybe I go slightly under pot here. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I think this is maybe a slightly better sizing. Overbet's good, too, though. Yeah, you played this really well. Wow, they have, like, the mega-blocked 2-pair. You played this really well. I think they are going to have too much 2-pair in this river range, because they're not, like, betting a river aggressively enough for value with the substrate stuff. But they're betting the straight too often. So playing the spot very, very badly. Um, I love the river sizing here. I think maybe slight over... Maybe over bet is better. I don't know. But it's very close to being the best line. I like the flop check here. I like that you didn't range bet the flop. Because I have a, a pet hatred for people that range bet the flop. If you range bet the flop... It's okay. You can still play the game. But I don't think it's that optimal. And I think you should maybe think about it a bit more. Against humans. Because like... Why fire off a bet in the dark here with sixes when you just don't really get too many double overcard hands to fold? Because, like, okay, if the board is king, seven, deuce, you can see bet in, like, eight, nine folds or queen, jack folds or something. But on king, ten, seven, nothing folds that's really live against you. And you don't have the six of spades. Your outs are kind of temp tainted. Okay, here we got the miracle six of diamonds, but 50% of those sixes were bad. And it's just, like, just check and see what they do and just, like, play straightforwardly here. I think it's just a better line, honestly. So I love the flop check. I love the river sizing. This is a great hand, but it's not a hard hand, so 7 out of 10. It can't score more than that because complexity-wise, it's just not that difficult. And guys, like, see if... I said this in the last video, but if you don't understand how the scoring system works by now, episode 10, and you're still of the opinion that, like, if a hand is perfect, it should get a 10, then I'm glad that you're not the judge of Gauntlet because the show would be shit... It'd be fucking garbage and no one would watch it if you were making it. So let's all just be thankful for that. Anyway. Ace King. Open call by Big Blind. King 8 5. 
I'd like to see probably a size up here, just exploitatively against this pool with this hand. I like it. This is just great. It's a great way to go printing money. It's just to size up your good hands here and down bet your, you know, your 10-9 of hearts or whatever you're see betting. It's a great exploit. People are not sensitive enough. You can start exploiting right from the flop. Nine of clubs, something like big but not over bet is good. Check is fine theoretically on this card. I'd rather bet because I don't think they're going to raise you off the best hand enough. They're meant to raise like 8, 7 and you know these kind of hybrid hands here and a bunch of draws and stuff. I just don't think they're going to find enough raises here. So I'd just be inclined to bet and harvest all of those calls from the pair plus draw stuff, the flush draw, the king x, whatever. Yeah, I think I would just prefer betting here against a human. I get that you can check in GTO. I just don't think it's right. There's a lot of action killing cards where people won't want to bluff catch some of their King X anymore and stuff. I don't know. I think, well, maybe they will. Maybe that's not true, but you probably won't value bet thinly enough because no one does in the bet check bet node. So I'd rather just bet the turn, therefore. Um, half pot from a fish is really mergy here. I'd raise, I think they have King, Queen, King, Jack, King, 10 mostly. They might have two pair, but a smallish raise here, like 20 big blinds or something is better than just calling. Yeah, we're just leaving money on the table there. We're not we're not reacting enough to the bet size equals hand strength rule. This hand, I don't like the turn check against a human here, especially like some unknown that could be a fish. I don't like the that's a horrible flop call, by the way, from Villain, I think, against that size. That's really bad. Um I don't like the river lack of raise. This hand has to get a three. It's just not a good hand. Right, moving on to hand eight. We check the big blind, we call. It goes check, check, and we hit trips. Quick one, good, because we're running out of time. We need a quick one. So, again, we check, free flop, seems good. We check call, the pot, pot size bet in the flop, but it's limp pot, so who cares? Seems good. We have this straight flush draw. We hit trips in the river. Villain mostly has queen x, jack x, under pair. You want to bet here. I wouldn't rely on them bluffing you. Big but not over bet, seems right. Yeah. Perfect hand, really well played. Okay, this is going to get, again, it's not a difficult spot, but you size the river well. Six. Sometimes you're capped at a six, you just can't get any more because the spot that comes up doesn't allow you to get any more, but you only need like a 6.2 or something to win. Man, this guy is 23-4. If there's ever a hand I want to fold to a min three bet, this is probably it. I don't know how, maybe you should fold against a net that min 3 bets you here. Yeah, you should probably just fold your hand. Like, how are we going to get 22% of the pot back? Like, we flop a 10, and, like, we're dead a lot. We flop a king, and we're dead a lot. You know, we flop a straight once in a blue moon, and it's great, but then villain has a set, and we have, they have redraw still. Like, we're just never going to crush someone out of position with king 10 off. Like, call 6-8 suited if you've opened it, which you shouldn't, but if you have... I'd call that, and I'd probably just fold this, honestly. I think it's really bad against a tight-looking player. It is quite a small sample, though, so maybe, maybe peeling's okay, but I don't love it. Now we're just in a shit spot. Um, I think the range is too strong for us to want to raise here. Probably we have to call and hope that either we hit a jack, in which case it's mega implies. We do have the ten of diamonds, which helps. And if they do check, that's probably indicative of ace-king, ace-jack on turn. And then we can go ahead and bluff river. For the most part, it could be some other hands as well. Now you fold. Yeah, I don't love this hand, but it's also not terrible. I'm going to give it a 5. I'm going to give it a 5 because I think you could have folded pre. But I think it would have been better because I honestly just don't think you get 20% of the pot. Maybe I'm wrong. But against the net fish that min clicks you, I know you guys can't see the HUD, but against the netty looking fish that min clicks you here, I really feel like this hand is like entitled to sub 20% of the pot. Like it's entitled to like 12% of the pot or something horrible. I feel like we just lose the pot all the time. In one way or the other. There's not a lot of room to outplay a nitty range with King 10 off out of position, so what good is 4 to 1? That's kind of my feeling on it. Last hand of season one of Poker Gun that we're going to be getting going with a 50 NL season at some point, by the way, by the way, guys. So calling all of you 50 NL players, send us your hands. You should be in a Discord group if you've ever spent a penny at Carrot Corner recently. You know, you've got subscription or the Carrot Poker School or coaching or something or even Cash Injection now. You know, you can join. You get a link to the Discord group. You should be in there if you've invested in your poker education. And so you can message us in the thread 
So I'm going to set up that basically says 50 and L gauntlet hands. Send us your hands. Send us your database. I want you. It's like that um, American um, recruitment poster. I want your hands. The 50 and L season. Your hands. Let's go. So we isolate to four. I just go to five or something. Like there's only one player to go. The bigger you make the pot with a monster like King Queen of Hearts, the better. This is the best suit of King Queen, by the way. It's scientifically proven that King Queen of Hearts hits the flop more often than any other King Queen suited. But not as often as King of Clubs, Queen of Diamonds. Um, I think betting flop is good. We deny equity in a relevant way here. We get ace high to fold. We can barrel a bunch of turns. We have implieds. You can also check raise the flop. The limpers tends to be a bit less stab happy than like a normal player though. So I think I prefer just betting. Wow, this sucks. We check and we face pot. This is why I don't like checking as well. Like sometimes they're just erratic and we just get put in a fucking blender spot like this. I mean, it's rarely going to be a 7. It will sometimes be a 7. It sucks, but you're just not going to realize your equity. The thing is that, like, the limper that pots the flop here is also going to bet the turn at quite a high frequency. Maybe you just have to fold. Yeah, I get it. I'm sympathetic to call here. You do have some showdown value against bluffs. You have two good pair draws. You have the back door, but you're only getting two to one. You're probably going to face a turn bet a lot. Okay, this card is is nice. We still have showdown here against all of the bluffs. Do we want to try and make villain fold a nine now or eights? I think they do have a lot of eight sixes. 9x on this node. But I think the showdown's just too good. I think we're just winning a bit too often. We do go for the bluff. The thing is, they could have ace x of diamonds here too, and they're just never folding that ever. If they have another diamond draw, you're just winning. If they have jack 10 or something, you're winning. Are they going to fold a 9? Maybe, but like probably not. Not to this size, I wouldn't think it's possible, but it's I'd say it's less than 50% fold equity here against. So yeah, like your fold equity against the hands that beat you here is easily less than like 33%. It's probably like, yeah, against the hands that beat you, your fold equity is probably like 25 to 30%. And therefore you should just check because you beat all the other stuff anyway. I mean, they could have like fours, five, sixes, but they might just call that on the river as well. Yeah, he just calls eight. See, I don't really like the river buff here. You're not factoring in your showdown value enough here, Andrew. You're not realizing that you're actually just beating a big part of villain's range still. I think you can fold the flop though, honestly. Sounds pretty bad. Flop is a mistake, I think. Pre-flop sizing isn't good and the river the river bluff's pretty bad. Hmm. Three. Three out of ten. Could be 2.5, I'm gonna go for three. Like it's not the worst thing I've ever seen, but it is pretty bad. Alright, guys, well if I've counted this up correctly. That means that the score for Andrew is 4.8 out of 10 on average, which is not a very good score. It is not going to, well, I don't know. I think there's been worse scores. Maybe the leaderboard's up there on the screen, guys. You can see where Andrew slots in, but it's certainly not, not anywhere near enough to, to threaten the dominance of Chad. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I, Pete Clark, governor of Poker Gauntlet, emperor of the Carrot Realm, do hereby proclaim chad the season one poker gauntlet champion we're gonna get chad onto the channel hopefully for an interview to get him some free coaching as a reward and to talk more poker with you guys i want you guys to meet the guy whose name i say in the middle of the night in my sleep i don't really by the way if you i know some of you don't understand humor especially if you're gen z or you're not from the uk and therefore you have a shit sense of humor. Like if you're Gen Z and not from the UK, you probably don't have as good a sense of humor as me because I'm a boomer from the UK, right? So that isn't actually what happens. Oops, just almost spilled my empty coffee. Uh, anyway, you know, I'm I'm thrilled for Chad. Commiserations to Andrew. This, this is going to do it for season one of Poker Gauntlet. If this has whet your appetite for more poker stuff, well... We have this thing called the Carrot Poker School on CarrotCorner.com. And Chad actually took the Carrot Poker School, just saying, back in the day. And then he took a bit of a break from poker, apparently. And then he started playing again. I actually reached out to him after the episode and said, hey, man, what's been up? You did really well. He was like, yeah, 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 I'm going to win. He didn't actually say that. He's a modest guy. But yeah, um, we're going to get him on the show. And, you know, we do have more content at Carrot Corner in the meantime. 
you know, for you to go through until episode, until season two of Gauntlet starts. And we're also going to continue with where are they now and all this other content. Don't forget to receive Pete's weekly, the Thursday weekly email that goes out on strategy and rambling about IRL stuff as well. You want to sign up on carrotcorner.com with that top link in the description that will also get you a link to the free beginner blueprint video, 43 minutes of the 10 things you should fix first. Definitely get in there. Get on that email list while you're waiting for it. It's free. And I'll see you for season two of Poker Gauntlet. A big hand to our editor. Round of applause for you, sir. Take a bow. Our editor did all of the Poker Gauntlets, bar one, I think, which was a stream version, episode two. This editor came up with the branding, the intro music and all of that. Does a phenomenal job of editing these and other videos for us. So this particular editor, round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, well done. He might try and cut this out because he's too humble. I hope he doesn't because he deserves credit. And we'll be back with season two in a few weeks or a month or two months or something like that. But I'll keep you posted. Thanks so much, guys. And see you next time. Bye-bye.